installment of Hot Stove presented by the General Insurance. The rookie, Scott Rowland. Oh, yeah! Third baseman. Wow, he's some kind of strong. Smothered by Scott Rowland. Outstanding young player. Takes a base hit away. Oh, what a nice play by Rowland. I believe there's a gold glove in that young man's future. Scott rocking Rowland rocks the unit. Hello for a first postseason game. Get up, get up. Home run. Rowland, listen to Cardinal Nation. Number 300 in the career for Scott Rowland. Scott gets his first home run of the postseason. And the St. Louis Cardinals are world champions in 2006. Rolling. Hall of Fame career. And it happened yesterday. He has accomplished everything in baseball. And after yesterday, I think that uh, that's a wrap on a great career for Scott Rowland being elected into the Hall of Fame. Yesterday, the live announcement on MLB Network, among those that know him best, that spent no fewer than five years as a teammate, Doug Glanville, who in Philly was teammates with Scott. Uh, and I, I think I have that right, Doug. Five years, your career's intersected in Philadelphia. Doug joins us to share his thoughts on the announcement yesterday. Good morning, Doug. Thanks for having, uh, having some time for us here today. I, I guess, you know, in the sixth year of eligibility, Scott Rowland's elected into the Hall of Fame. But in, in the minds of a lot of ex-teammates, and I'm, I'm guessing you're one of them that feels this way, um, there was never a doubt that he was a Hall of Famer. Yeah, guys, I mean, no question about it. it he was a guy that was so steady. And so I imagine that might be the reason it was it's as a ball player. But there's no doubt that his consistency and his steadiness was an asset to his game. We watch someone play every day. I got a chance to see this all the time about having great defense and being able to run the bases with his you know, hair on fire, literally, and uh, and the way he brought so much to the game. But he was steady, and that's why we called him Rock, you know, Rock Rolling, because he had that sureness and that certainty about how he approached the game. So I always appreciated his principles, the way he just steady as you go, go to work work, go home, it's not about the show, and got the job done. Uh, Doug, I, I got to see him from the outside looking in, and I, I shared a little story about how I thought he worked. Uh, give me your perspective on being on the inside, because you talked about steady, consistent, the rock. All those things mean to me, like the dude's bringing his lunch pail uh, to the yeah. office and he gets after. But there was a seriousness about him during BP um, and taking his ground balls that I think was a little different than, than, than most players. Oh, he had a routine, and, and you knew that. Every day, especially hitting off the tee, that was a big thing. And I remember once we went on a road trip to the West Coast. We didn't do very well. Larry Bo was our manager. And the first day back, we had early batting practice. And so Boa calls us in the office because it was Bobby Abreu, myself, and Scott who didn't take early batting practice. We just had our other routine. And, and Bo was like, what are you guys doing? Like, you guys are struggling. You're hitting 220 and you're missing early batting practice. And Scott was, you know, very principled. He's like, are you questioning my professionalism? I mean, just dead serious. Ooh. So, like, I think the temperature dropped like 30 degrees in the room. And, and you know, I understood Bo was trying to motivate us and say, hey, guys, we're, we can't be complacent. But Scott just had his routine and he trusted it inherently that this was his ritual. This is how he gets prepared. And it doesn't matter what you think. That this is what I know I need to do. And so he had a very serious approach to the pregame. And, and another scenario, when Jimmy Rollins first came up, got called up, you know, Jimmy was fun loving, total opposite of Roland when he first got called up. He just Roland doing his job. Jimmy was about the show. And Jimmy would talk through every swing in batting practice. Oh, did you see that? Oh, look at the backspin on the dip the ball out of here. He was just like constantly. And, you know, he'd been up for like a week. So Scott calls Bobby Abreu and I aside and says, okay, guys, I, I don't want to blindside you but I'm kicking Jimmy Rollins out of our group effective tomorrow. Okay. I'm just telling you that's what's, and if you have any thoughts, you can say something, but I'm kicking him out of the group. And, and that was it. And we just, we, we just like had to just let it happen. And Jimmy didn't talk for like days, but of course, Jimmy found his great career. So Scott just had his rituals and his routines, but he was also very funny at the same time. That is an incredible story. I love that. I, you know, I want to kind of peel back another layer with you, Doug, on those early Philly years, because for you, after two years with the Cubs, you're traded over to the Phils. You know, 98, 99, 2000 Phillies wasn't very bueno, man. You guys finished uh, <laughs> mid to bottom of the pack. 
The AstroTurf at the vet was brutal. I know that Scott talked about it in an unflattering sense. You were in center field getting beat up with that stuff. Talk about those years and, and maybe some of the additional challenges you guys faced. Well, you know, on the other side of the coin of those years, yes, we struggled. And look, for the rest of my life, I was just going to chase the back of the Atlanta Braves jersey. I mean, that was, we were second place. We were, we were always behind them. They just had a legendary team. We, we couldn't keep up with them. But we also had a lot of fun with those teams. And, and Scott was part of that. You know, think about Bobby Abreu, Kurt Schilling. I mean, there's talent in the room. You know, we just could not get, get out of our own way in a lot of ways. And remember, Terry Francona was our manager. And I know Scott loved Terry, but there was a great relationship with Tito about every day, positive. You know, he was learning the X's and O's and eventually became this world champion. And, and so those years I remember fondly about Scott just figuring out his game and how to become uh, the next level pro that he would ultimately become. And, uh, and yes, the AstroTurf was, we called it Astro Fault. And, and, 